Ekeke, I got tested like we agreed. And my results came back clean. Oh, that's, that's great news, Namara. I'm relieved to hear that. Yes, it is good news. But you need to get tested and the nurse said we both need to get retested after three months. It's important, Akeke. Of course, of course. We'll get around to it, Namara. No need to rush. Days pass, and Namara's departure date for Novastria draws near. Okek seizes the opportunity to present her with the fabricated medical report. You're still packing, huh? Yes. There's a lot to do before I leave for Novastria tomorrow. I'm so tired. Here, Namara. These are my test results. I got tested, just like you wanted. Happy now. Namara scans the report quickly, fatigue clouding her judgment as she prepares for her journey. Yes. I, I suppose I am. Thank you, Akeke. As Okek watches Namara's weary acceptance, a sly smile crosses his lips, knowing he's successfully deceived her once again. You know, Namara, it's not easy being constantly judged for my past mistakes. I'm your husband, for crying out loud. What more do you want from me? Namara's heart sinks at Okek's words, but she pushes aside her doubts, choosing to believe in the validity of the test results before her. I understand, Akeke. Let's just focus on moving forward, for the sake of our family. The next day. With a heavy heart, Namara bids farewell to her family as she sets off for Navastria, unaware of the deceit lurking beneath the surface. Namara, it's been too long. Welcome back. Thank you, Nalongo. It's good to be back. How's everything? Well, business has been slow lately. I'm starting to think we need to diversify our offerings a bit. I've noticed the same trend in Vallejo City. Maybe it's time for a change. Oh, by the way, I heard about the building where the cross-border trading group stays. Is it true they're tearing it down? Yes, unfortunately. Some big corporation bought the land. Apparently, they have decided to build a skyscraper there. We've got to find new accommodations soon. That sounds like a hassle. And I suppose the new place will cost us more. You've got it. Each of us will need to contribute more for the rent. It's becoming quite a burden. More. But I'm already stretching my finances as it is. How much more are we talking? It's significant. Enough to make you pause. This could really slow me down in saving for my distribution center. And I can't just rent my own place in Vallejo. It's very expensive and it's not safe. I understand. Financial strain is never easy. And accessing your investments early isn't an option. No. The penalties are too steep. It's frustrating. I know this might seem like a distraction, but hear me out. Business has been really bad lately, the economic crisis left many people unemployed, and the drought affected all farming activities, leaving most of our customers with very little money to spend. However, we can't afford to miss a new opportunity that I thought of. Selling frozen water and frozen cool drinks in the drought affected areas could be our lifeline. Water, alongside our usual goods. Exactly. It's temporary. We'll hawk and sell wherever there's need. It's a chance to help and profit. All right, I'm in. Let's do it. And I'll invest in a large cooler box to start. That's the spirit, Namara. Together, we'll make it work. The Lord will see us through every good and bad season in business. I just hold on to what Romans 8 verse 28 says. That is, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. Have you heard about Akeke? He's been seen with other women while Namara's away. Really? That's despicable. I heard he's been dating multiple women in the village. Women are often captivated by his physical appearance without considering the integrity of his character and the sanctity of his marriage to Namara. It is imperative for these women to empathize with Namara's position and imagine the pain they would experience if their own husbands were unfaithful. Instead of pursuing relationships with married men, they should respect the boundaries of marriage and refrain from infringing upon the sacred bond between spouses. Furthermore, it is crucial to bring Okeke's indiscretions to the attention of the village elders for appropriate action and accountability. Exactly. I've warned you girls about dating a married man. 
Yes, mother. It's a no-go area for me. Can see. Do you hear me? But he's told me he loves me and will leave Namara for me. Don't be foolish, dear. He'll never leave Namara. She's the mother of his children and provides for him. But he's wealthy. He said he left his mansion and cars in Pallavi, and he'll take me there as his wife. <laughs> He's probably broken on the run. And that money he spends on you. It's likely from Namara. No way. When I move to Pallavi with him, I'll make sure Namara and her kids get nothing from him. I'll be his official wife in Pallavi. My dear, you're being gullible and wicked. Akeke's a liar and a cheat. I refuse to believe it. What kind of man cheats on his wife? Will he do the same to me if we marry? Akeke is a serial cheater and liar. You'd do well to stay away from him. It's hard for me to stay away from him because I am already in love with him. My dear, do you truly believe it's love? I suspect it might be mere infatuation. True love grows with time as you get to know each other and view each other objectively. If Akeke truly loves you then he won't keep you a secret, he would have divorced his wife first before starting a relationship with you. Genuine love only exists when God is present and obeyed. Because God is love, without God, there's no love. Anything else is likely to be infatuation, lust, or temptation. But mother... If you find it easy to fall in love, then surely you can just as easily fall out of it. It's all a matter of mindset, my dear. What should I do now? Consider taking a break from your relationship with Akeke, and seek forgiveness and guidance from the Lord. The fact that you're involved with a married man is, in itself, a clear indication that what you're doing is wrong, and it will not lead to a happy ending. It's best to step away now before you end up getting hurt. Trust my words on this. Sister Tendo, I've been trying to reach Namara for months now, but no luck. I'm going on maternity leave soon, and she doesn't have my personal cell number. If she comes looking for me, could you give her my number? Also, let her know that OKK still hasn't come in for his checkups. I'm getting worried. It's time they both got retested. Of course, Sister Kawumulo. I'll make sure to pass along the message. Kiwamalo leaves, and Tendo immediately dials her boyfriend, Wamala. Hey, Wamala. Listen, I need to tell you something. She proceeds to tell him everything, including Kiwamalo's concerns about Okek's absence and the need for retesting. If Namara asks, you tell her Okeke was there and the test results are real. Understand. Who is that? Just some girl who's got a crush on me. She needs some advice. There's a poor signal here. Let me move over there. My love, yeah, I got it. But what if I get caught in the lie? Deny everything. It's your word against hers. And as long as nothing's in writing, you're safe. Just do as I say. Okay, I'll trust you. Thanks, Wimala. She hangs up, conflicted but resigned to follow her lover's instructions. Three months later, Namara returns to Mono from Navastria. Excuse me, I'm looking for Nurse Kiwumulo. Is she available? I'm sorry, but Nurse Kiwumulo is currently on maternity leave. Can I assist you with anything else? Actually, yes. I need a favor. Can you confirm if my husband, Akeke Wilfred Mensa, visited the clinic for testing about three months ago? I have some concerns, and it would put my mind at ease to know the truth. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I can't disclose any patient information without their consent. If you have doubts about your husband, perhaps it's best to discuss them with him directly. After all, marriage is built on trust. If you can't trust him, why are you still with him? You're right, thank you. Can you at least give me Nurse Kawumulo's contact information? Yes, sure. Here it is. Thank you. Hello, Nurse Kawumulo. 
This is Namara. I wanted to ask about Akeke's visit to the clinic for testing three months ago. Oh, Namara, I'm glad you called. Okeke never came in for testing. I have been waiting for him for the past three months or so. I'm sorry to say. Namara's heart sinks. It seems that the health report Akeke presented to me was fabricated. He had the nerve to show me a falsified document. I shudder to imagine the extent of what he's concealing. It seems he's worried about everything being exposed once he undergoes testing. I will address this directly with him. We met as husband and wife before I departed for Novistria, and I pray he hasn't transmitted any infections or STIs to me. Thank you for being honest with me, Nurse Kawumulo. Ekeke, I spoke to Nurse Kawumulo. She said you never went to the clinic for testing. If you didn't go to the clinic, explain where you got the medical report that you showed me the day before I left for Novistria. That's nonsense, Namara. She must be mistaken. It's probably just her hormones acting up. I saw Nurse Tendo, not Kiwimulo. And I was just there a few days ago for retesting. Look, I even have the results. Okek shows Namara another set of fake health reports. Fine. I'll call the clinic and ask for Nurse Tendo. Fine. Hello, Nurse Tendo. I just wanted to confirm some information about Akeke's visit to the clinic. Yes, Namara. Akeke was indeed here a few days ago for retesting, and his results came out clean. I see. Thank you, Nurse. Namara, you must stop embarrassing me by double-checking everything I say or do. How dare you make inquiries about my health behind my back? For how long will you make me pay for my past mistakes? Namara, the fact that you're the one who brings in money in our home doesn't give you the right to disrespect me like this. I am sorry, Akeke. It's just that my life, my health and my well-being is tied to yours. If you catch something then you can easily transmit it to me because I am your wife. You did it several times in the past, and I never got over it. That's enough Namara. At least now you know that you're wrong about me. Akeke, if I may ask, why didn't you wait for me so that we could go together for testing at the clinic? Enough Namara. Stop irritating me. Namara's doubts linger, but she chooses to trust Okeke and the information she's been given. A few days later. Namara, I need that money. It's only fair that I have access to it as your husband. Akeke, I gave you your monthly allowance only a few days ago. What did you do with the money and why are you all dressed up? As far as the rest of my money is concerned, that money is for my business. I can't just hand it over to you. You think you can just hide it from me? I'll find it, Namara. Just you wait. Akeke. You worked for years and earned well in Palavi but you never gave me any money. You only bought us groceries once in all the five years you spent there. Also, my business will not collapse because of you. I will turn this house upside down. I will find the money wherever you hid it. You won't find it, Akeke. I've hidden it where you'll never think to look. As Okek continues to search fruitlessly, his desperation only grows, fueling his determination to get his hands on Namara's money. Why are you being so stubborn, Namara? I need that money, now more than ever. I won't let you squander it, Akeke. Not when I know it's meant to support our family and my business. With each passing day, the tension between Namara and Okek reaches new heights, as they stand locked in a battle of wills over the money that could mean salvation or ruin for their family. Namara, my dear, how are you feeling? Last time you called from Novastria, you mentioned you weren't feeling well. Oh, it was nothing, Mother Nakakand. Just a false alarm, really. False alarm or not, dear, your health is nothing to take lightly. What were your symptoms? Well, I had severe stomach pains, and there was a strange discharge and odor, but I was deep in the villages of Novastria, far from any doctors. I visited a pharmacist, and he said it was likely thrush or something similar. Gave me some antibiotics, said it would clear up. Namara, perhaps you should consider getting a proper health check at the village clinic. It's better to be safe than sorry. I understand, Mother Nakakand. 
If the symptoms return, I'll make sure to see a doctor right away. Despite Namara's reassurances, Nakagan can't shake the worry from her heart, vowing silently to keep a close eye on Namara's health while she's in Mano. A few months later, before the food depleted and having made some successful sales in Mano, Namara boarded the train bound for Vallejo in Navastria. You should have seen her face when I walked in, boys. She couldn't resist me, not with a plate of my mother's delicious cooking in front of her. <laughs> You've got it made, okay, Kay. Taking advantage of the drought and all these desperate women. Exactly. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. And thanks to your brilliant idea of dating women from the neighboring village, no one suspects a thing. We're geniuses, I tell you. Making the most of the situation. As Okek and his friends share a laugh, oblivious to the consequences of their actions, the village around them buzzes with gossip and whispers about Okek's clandestine affairs. Later, Okek sits alone, wrestling with his inner demons. What am I doing? How did I let it come to this? His thoughts swirl with a mixture of guilt and self-justification, as he grapples with the consequences of his actions. Namara doesn't deserve this. She's been nothing but good to me, providing for our family, even when I fail to do so. But I can't seem to stop myself. Something keeps pulling me into this reckless life. His gaze falls upon the trinkets and gifts Namara has provided, a pang of guilt tugging at his heart. I may not love Namara, but I love what she brings, the stability, the comforts. It's not much, but it's something. And I can't bear the thought of losing it all. As he contemplates the possibility of Namara discovering his infidelity, fear grips Okek's heart, but he clings to a false sense of security. She'll never leave me. She didn't have anywhere to go before, and she won't now. That's what I tell myself, at least. Despite his rationalizations, Okek knows deep down that his choices are leading him down a dangerous path, one that threatens to destroy everything he holds dear. Thank you for watching this episode of Namara. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we invite you to do so. Subscribing ensures that you'll be notified whenever we release new content. Also, we'd appreciate it if you'd like and share our content. Thank you for your support. As we conclude this narrative, we are reminded of the intricate web of choices and consequences that shape our lives. Through the trials and tribulations of Okek and Namara, we have witnessed the dangers of deception, infidelity, and complacency. The lessons learned from their story are profound. Firstly, honesty and communication are the cornerstones of any healthy relationship. Okek's deceit and manipulation only serve to sow seeds of discord and mistrust, ultimately leading to a fractured marriage. Secondly, we are reminded of the importance of self-awareness and accountability. Okek's reluctance to confront his own flaws and take responsibility for his actions only perpetuated his cycle of destructive behavior. Lastly, we see the power of resilience and self-worth embodied in Namara's character. Despite facing betrayal and hardship, she remained steadfast in her determination to provide for her family and uphold her own values. To avoid falling into similar pitfalls, it is crucial to prioritize open and honest communication in our relationships, to confront our own shortcomings with humility and courage, and to never compromise our self-worth for the sake of convenience or material gain. Let us heed these lessons as we navigate the complexities of human relationships, striving always to cultivate honesty, empathy, and integrity in our interactions with others. Only then can we hope to build relationships that are truly fulfilling and enduring. Before we conclude, we would like to share the following verses with you. Kindly note that the verses were taken from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Proverbs 12.22 says, Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are His delight. Ephesians 4.25 says, Where for putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Colossians 3, 9 says, By not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Galatians 6, 5 says, For every man shall bear his own burden. 
Romans 14, 12 says, So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. James 5, 16 says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Psalm 46, 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Romans 8.37 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And Galatians 6.7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you in prayer, we are reminded of the lessons learned from the trials and challenges depicted in this episode. We acknowledge our need for your guidance, wisdom, and grace as we navigate the complexities of human relationships and the temptations that come our way. Grant us the strength to uphold honesty and integrity in all our interactions, that we may speak truthfully and deal justly with one another. Help us to be accountable for our actions, recognizing our own shortcomings and seeking forgiveness when we fall short of your perfect standard. Fill us with resilience and courage, Lord, that we may face adversity with unwavering faith and confidence in your promises. May we find our refuge and strength in you, knowing that through Christ, we are more than conquerors over every trial and tribulation. Bless us with discernment and wisdom to recognize the pitfalls and temptations that seek to ensnare us, and grant us the grace to resist them. May your Holy Spirit guide us in the paths of righteousness and lead us to walk in your ways. We lift up our relationships to you, Lord, asking for your grace to abound in our marriages, families, and friendships. Help us to love one another with sincerity and to honor the commitments we have made before you. In all things, may your will be done, and may your name be glorified. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.